today in class we talked about how to draw a paper airplane using visual measurement. Um, so this is the printout that everyone received in class. If you weren't able to be here today, I will um, attach a photo of this worksheet in with the video and you can either print it out or you can enlarge it on your computer screen and look at it while you're drawing. So when we talk about visual measurement, um, we're going to be using our pencil to visually measure the various angles of this paper airplane and then we'll be using that angle that you find with your pencil and translating it over to our paper and drawing the actual paper airplane. So I'm going to move it over and kind of tuck it under here so you can see the airplane and my notebook over here. So you'll just be doing this in your sketchbook that was sent home and we're going to start by just drawing out the basic shape of a paper airplane. So if you break down a paper airplane into its most basic shape, it is a triangle. Um, so we're going to start by just drawing these three main lines. Um, I'm going to take my pencil and find that angle of the paper airplane and then translate that over to my paper. And you can do this one of two ways. Um, if I have a second pencil, so I have a second pencil here. I can use this first one as a ruler or I can just use it for the visual measurement and kind of do my best to then recreate that angle that I just measured. And one thing that you need to figure out, once you have the correct angle, then you need to ask yourself, how long does my line need to be? So that's something you can also use your pencil for. If I start it at the tip up here, and go all the way down, I can see that it's longer than my pencil, just a little bit. So I can then translate that over here and it needs to be a little bit longer than my pencil, a little bit longer. So we're using our, me our pencil as a measurement tool in multiple ways. Once I have that first angle um, found and drawn, I'm gonna do this second angle over here. So measuring it, lining it up with my pencil and then Boom, translating it over to my paper. I'm really just double checking your angles as you go, making sure everything is lining up. It may not be perfect on the first time. Um, you might have to go back and redraw if you get it out too wide or too narrow. That is perfectly okay. The last one that we need to measure is this bottom angle of our triangle here. So taking my pencil, translating it over onto my paper. And then we have the base of our um, paper airplane drawn. The next thing we want to do is break down these two big main flaps of the paper airplane. So doing this, I'm going to again line my pencil up with the inner side of that triangle and then translate it over to my paper. Drawing all the way down. Once I have one, I'm going to repeat the same with the other side. Using my pencil to get the angle that I want. There we go. The next step is going to be to draw this little V kind of tail that's at the bottom of our paper airplane. So what you want to do with that, this line right here is kind of an extension of this side, but it's just slightly slanted. It's not straight coming out. So it's going to be important that I use my pencil to get the correct angle so that I know kind of where that needs to break and turn a little bit goes straight and then it curves down. And I'm gonna do the same with this one over here, using that as it comes down from the other side of that paper airplane. And once I have that where the paper airplane folds down, I can erase this middle line. 
and you can see that V in the triangle. But it's missing one more piece. We need to remember to have this line back here because that shows the depth in the triangle and it makes it three dimensional when it has that depth. So using my pencil to get the correct angle and then pulling it over to my paper, just like that. The last three lines we need to visually measure are these two folds in the triangle and then right here where it goes down into um, the center, also creating that depth. So I'm gonna start with this one over here on the right side, using my pencil to line that up and then translating it over to my paper. And you can also look at it this way. So if I use my fingers to kind of size up how much space this takes up, moving it up, I can see it's not quite a third, not quite a third of the way. So if I take this and move it, whoop, if I take this and move it up, I still have space up here. It's not quite a third of the way up either. I'm gonna repeat the same step on the left side. using my pencil to get those angles of the airplane. And then the last step is to create this line right here in the middle. So this middle line is gonna be parallel to this outer line. So if I line up my pencil here and I drag it out, it's gonna match up perfectly. So you have two choices here. You can either use your pencil to get the angle and carry it over, or you can measure, you can line your pencil up with right here at the bottom that you've already created and then slide it up so that you have that same parallel line. So if you are very confident in this line down here that you have drawn, you can use it to get the correct angle or if you think you might need to double check, use this one over here. And then that is it. We have our paper airplane drawn and mapped out and that is what we did in class today. At the very end, we did make three paper airplanes so here is the one that we made together in class. Um, you can look up on Google how to make paper airplanes. There's also a step-by-step -step diagram in the presentation that is on Schoology. Students use class time to create their three paper airplanes. And then tomorrow we will talk about composition and how to set them up for our still life that will be on our project. So go ahead and do your sketch and create your three paper airplanes.